Hi, my name is Hago Hornis. I'm the manager of Intelligent Systems at Peppel & Fuchs. In this video, we will cover another configuration example for our safety controller. For this next example, we will configure a safety system that is composed of a single e-stop and two magnetic door switches. The reason we want to do a magnetic door switch is that there are some minor changes in the configuration that should be considered. So with the Simon Plus software already running, we're going over into the toolbar and select the new icon to start a new configuration. As before, the information about monitor and bus window will show up and we can put in a configuration title. So we're going to call this e-stop and magnet switches. Select again the proper hardware and then click on the safety basic monitor tab. Uh, still, as before, as for the example with the three e-stops, the sets S1, S2 are dry contact for the e-stops. S3, S4 will be dry contacts for the first magnetic door switch and S3, S, S5, S6 is going to be utilized for the second magnetic, magnetic door switch. Um, there will be no safety device on S7, S8 and instead we will configure that input set again as a standard input output so that we can have a reset for the magnetic for the e-stop. Click OK. Oh, actually, before we do that, as before, we want to disable this checkbox down here. Then click OK. On the configuration screen, we're going to start again by providing our safe output. And we're going to use a stop category 0 for immediate shutdown. Once that has been dragged and dropped onto the configuration space from the device library, the details window pops up and a name can be put in. Again, here on, on, on the assignment um, window and the assignment part, we select OSSD1 because on the setup that I have put together, the motor contactor is controlled by the first safe output and that's called OSSD1. No further changes needed here. Click OK. Now we start adding safety devices. The first safety device we're going to add is an emergency e-stop button. We grab it in the device library and drag it onto the global end. call it e-stop and we select dependent with filtering to allow for a little bit of uh, bounce and synchronization or asynchronicity between the two contacts and out of the three sets that are available I have connected this e-stop to the contact set labeled S1, S2 so I make sure I select that. That's all I need from here and actually there's one thing I want to do now um, when using magnetic door switches, it is allowed that machines can auto restart when small access doors are closed. So we do not necessarily have to reset a system once one of those doors is open. As a consequence, I need to take the reset function and add it as a sub function to the e stop. I do that by clicking on the local acknowledgement. And from this window, I select which of the safe input, which of the conventional inputs is used as my reset function. S72 is where my reset button is connected, so I will pick that one. That's all I have to do. And I click OK to close this out. To configure the magnetic door switches, I will utilize a different visual so it's a little easier to read later on. I'm using the safety guard. As before, drag it onto the global end and provide a suitable name. So, for instance, door one. 
I will configure the magnetic door switch also as a dependent with filtering, but I will make two changes. First change is I will check off the infinite synchronization time. What this allows to happen is when a door is, is closed very, very slowly, the magnet can pull in the first contact on the magnet switch and much, much later the second contact without causing a fault. Uh, previously, without this checked, let me undo this, the default is 0.5 seconds. That means when the door closes and the first contact is pulled in by the magnet, the second contact must be pulled in within a half a second or a fault will be posted. So we don't want this, therefore I use infinite. has no bearing whatsoever on the safety part since we're dealing in this case with the way the system will start up. It will of course immediately shut down as soon as one contact opens up when the doors open. Also, um, experience taught me that, that doors tend to be bouncy and I want to add a little more stabilization time, giving the contacts more time to settle into their closed state. So I will utilize 0.2 seconds as my stabilizing time. That's all. In this case, I do not select an Oakle acknowledgement because I want this magnetic door switch to auto start as soon as the door is closed. Now I click OK and uh, go over and grab me another safety guard call it door 2 select dependent with filtering there's really no more option in terms of the inputs because I've already used up two of the three that I had configured I click on infinite synchronization time and I increase the stabilizing time to 0.2 seconds. Again, do not check local acknowledgement if you want this door to be auto reset. Last thing that needs to be done is to add the restart function. And because I have put the reset directly into the e-stop function block and I want the door switches to auto start, I will utilize an automatic start as the overall startup condition and drag it here. I don't have to change the name, I can if I want to. But I just simply click OK. With all this being done, I go back to the configuration checker and it says the configuration is OK. Now I can start the download use the monitor drop-down and select PC to monitor. I will be asked for the password. Once the plain text file has been uploaded, I click OK. Sign off on the configuration, validate the configuration and then turn on the protective operation. Again, an updated version of the configuration lock with all the download times and names will be provided and the controller goes to run mode. So we can see that everything is green, it's running. So let's go through some of the operations. Number one, I'm going to hit an e-stop and the machine will in fact turn off because the global AND function by virtue of receiving one false signal indicated by the red line and the red box around the e-stop goes to false therefore the motor will go to false and therefore the output will shut off and that deactivates the motor contactor. If I reset the e-stop it will transition to the yellow ready state and uh, we know what that means. That means something is missing and that missing piece is the reset input S72 so if I click my reset button the motor pulls back in and everything is running so let's open a door I open a door 
and the motor immediately shuts down and when I close the door the system auto restarts just as we wanted to have it. So we can combine the functionality of an auto restart and a reset restart very easily into one safe output. Something that in conventional hardwired technology will require at least two safety relays. I hope you found this configuration example helpful. Please watch our other videos discussing the Pepper and Fuchs safety controller.